Batteries belong in flashlights. I thought they belong in something that starts with D. That's what I, that's what I read. So we're finally filming Bench Talk. Hang on. I've asked you to film Bench Talk, what, 10, 15 times over the last three months? Probably 20. Every time he's got an excuse, and I gave up. I just gave up, so it's never gonna be recorded again. So we are finally here actually filming something. Well, I'm pretty time poor. I've got a lot going on, and uh, of all the requests of every video we make, everyone says, uh, when's your next bench talk? And if you look at the stats, no one watches them. <laughs> Nobody watches them. <laughs> and they, even though these videos look quite simple, they're quite time consuming to make. Very time consuming to edit. The only reason we really make them is to sell merch. And speaking of merch, look at this new 25 year merch line we've got going. They're going out the door like just, can't keep up with the orders, can we, Jordan? 25 years shop.fullboost.com.au They look awesome. Hang on, hang on. We've also got uh, 25 year stubby holders, but Jordan's not... been too lazy to put these on the shop. They're not even for sale and I've got a box of them here. I reckon these would be pretty at home at the racetrack with some of those um, great northern beige cans because that's all you ever see. <laughs> Raising our comments and what a surprise. A few, uh, a few highlights here. Now, we, this is a very old video of Rhys McGregor, New Zealander. I think he was one of the, I don't know if he's a first or on a seven, but he was... Uh, but he was one of the pioneers of the GDR. Yeah, wait, way. this is going back, yeah. what, 15, 15, 20 years ago yeah. even. Like that, that was a very fast car. And I think it says something like, you know, seven second GDR or something. This comment, you mean eights, not sevens. And I'm thinking... Ah, oh, we're back on this, this gravy train, aren't we? <laughs> And I'm thinking, oh, round that up, round that uh, down. I, I play the video and it runs like a flat eight or something, an eight, 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 oh, eight, one or something. Thinking, a lot of oh. people though, Geordie, do watch the first pass and it may not run its best number till the end. And then and they I, comment. I, and I thought that, right? I thought yeah. maybe it runs a seven right at the end of the video and he just hasn't watched it all. So I go through there. That's right. I said something like, maybe watch the whole video because it ran a seven. I did. And there's not sevens, only almost eights. Almost eights. He's, he's taking the PI double five there. So then check this video. There's a 795, a 798, and a 789 in this video. Clearly a seven second GTR. I don't want to hear any more of these lies. 789 is the same as eights. Don't lie to the people. Yeah, this guy's the people. The people. This is 100% th uh, trolling. I'm thinking this is trolling. He claims it isn't. So let's just take him on our word because there's always someone who does not agree with our terminology. So apparently this is an eight second car. No, actually, it's an almost eight. Almost eight. It's almost eight. Today we're taking a closer look with a deeper dive to find out what it's all about. How much for eights? 0.11. How much for sevens? 0.89. This is simple math. Why would we ever want to make a number less precise in the first place? How many fingers am I holding up? Simple math would be, Geordie, what's less than eight? 7.99. It's rounding the numbers. Just watching a video about rounding isn't enough to get really good at it. You are not rounding the numbers. You just take the first number regardless of the rest. Okay. Yeah, it ran a 789. It means it's a seven second car. He doesn't get it. I always, I'm always astounded to this. Where, where in motorsport, any form of motorsport, are they rounding numbers up and down? The car is consistently doing almost eights, almost eights, and the title is sevens. This is misleading the public complete misinformation. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. democracy. You are fake news. There's no way this is a real comment. A serious delusion. If there was another car doing, let's say, 702 as average compared to this car, it's not even in the same league. Well, no, it's not. One is running what we call flat sevens and one is running high sevens. There's also a term called mid sevens, but that's irrelevant. Mm. Despite both doing in the seven seconds, a car below, so this is where the just making this stuff up as it goes. A car below seven fives by rounding, it's doing sevens. The car in this video is not even close to seven fives, so it's doing eights. You missed your math lesson? <laughs> we are laughing. Oh, this, this comment was just to get on bench talk, George. You, you probably did this for clickbait purposes because it's that wrong. Like it is misinformation, almost eights, and we're misleading the public. What's that Trump wrote? Wrong. With that logic, you would say that Hussein Bolt, you know, runs the 100 meters. He's a, he's a 10 second runner. Yeah. 10 second runner. He's scored 958. He's ahead of- 958. 958 I had to look up. That's I, a serious 60 foot. I thought that was still in the 96s, but 958 exactly. 
But that's that's almost tens. Oh, almost almost tens. tens. So he's got to run a nine four nine to be a nine second runner. Nine four nine, and then you get to round it down, and then you oh. can say he's a nine second runner. Is it, that means he's almost eights. If he gets nine four nine, then isn't he? In theory, he's almost eights. No, you're, you're thinking about the wrong way. No, no, you can round that shit down. No, no, no. To go yeah. almost eights, you've got to be running set high sevens. Mm -hmm. And that's not sevens, that's eights. <laughs> you bought a WRX, what were you thinking? <laughs> almost as bad as what was I thinking when I bought a Yaris. We have the two most hated cars on the internet. <laughs> The funny thing is, um, I also own a bug eye, and people are saying how awesome the bug eye is compared to my Subaru. Now, the new one. Now, I'm, you know, I'm old enough to remember when the bug eye came out. That wasn't exactly well liked, was it? I would have to leave and go and um, vomit. It was just hated upon hated. Every Subaru model's been hated, but it's funny having a car. I've had the car a month. And I haven't, I haven't, I know they're out there, but I haven't actually seen another WRX on the road. I haven't either. You've uh, nicknamed it the Shark Eye. I, I said in the last video, I think I said, or maybe the Stink Eye, I didn't actually realise that that G3, the third generation chassis, I didn't realise that was actually called the Stink Eye by some. Really? Yeah. Every WRX that's come out is always crucified on how bad it looks. Hmm. And then the next model, model comes out and then they forget about the last model. It's just this, the cycle continues. Cycle of shit! And you know what? There's this thing, if I don't like the car, I can sell it. But did you see the Focus? I think just hot off the press, the Ford Focus has just been uh, canned. That was one car I actually considered. And the Fiesta. So yeah. Ford will only be selling, the only what you consider is a passenger car and it's a sports car, is a Mustang. Mustang, vans, mm -hmm. yeah. pickups and SUVs. But and that's it's the same that's, as the that's USA, old news. They yeah. said out of Europe they were going to cancel the Focus a while ago. But so I think in Australia they said there's 40 or 50 more cars coming and apparently no more. That's it. Well, what do you buy? I mean, I was just on the way here today. I was getting uh, har harassed on the road behind me by one of those Navara's, um, what do they call them, Pro 4 Max or one, so of, those, one of those all burners, you know, the things. But that, hang on, the latest sticker pack on it would have given it extra... Extra tink. cred. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, I'm sitting there thinking... Um, what is it? Now that the new Ford Ranger's here, we're all toast. Because you know how fast these um, dual cab drivers drive? They're just, they're, they're just, they're like, what is it? Just dicing behind that, you. Those engines are either idling <laughs> with that quality diesel sound, or they're just to the boards, just wide open. Just for, there's no, there's no just cruise off the lights. It's just hammer down. Hammer down. And every time you, every time you come to emerging like a pole position, and a guy in a tire truck rolls up next to you, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're driving. You could be driving a, a Mirage. You're just like. You need to double check. Is this guy all right? And you, you know he's going to cut a good light. He's going to 60 foot, like, his reaction time is like, he's, he's gone out of there. And you can even wait for them to go and just give it a squirt and just, what is it? Bye-bye. Like, this, most of them are so slow. You know the worst ones? The worst ones are those 3.2 wild tracks. Oh, the Rangers. The wild yeah. tracks, because they just sound like, da 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 Say that again. da 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 It just sounds like everything's falling out of the engine. And then the lights go green and a whole lot of noise happens and they're pretty good north to three kilometers an hour and then it's going and, and then you just like but they drive them like they're fast mm. i don't get it i just couldn't do it i just couldn't do it i've i've i've, I've actually thought about maybe, maybe we need a dual cab like it would actually be useful cutting stuff around but i think before that happens i think i'll be fitting a tow bar to this new wrx and getting a six by four trailer <laughs> that's a good one and i'll just drive around with merchandise in the back of that because there's no way there's, there is no way I can drive one of those tight trucks going back to the hot hatches though I think I'd rather a van I think I'd buy a van before one. listen more and talk less the Megane that's been scrapped there's not going to be no more of them being made yeah, they're, so they're I think they've closed down or they're going to close down the Renault Sport factory where those RS's are made. Well, they're going electric, Jordan. Everything's going electric. Everything's just getting cut. Everything's gone. I don't know what we're going to buy. In, in another five years, it's, I think it'll be worse because there'll be less uh, ice cars available and more of this plug-in crap coming. And I shouldn't say crap. They're uh, saving the planet. I shouldn't say that, should I? This bloke's trying to find the Bench Talk run sheet and he's got 65 apps open on his phone. Because Bench Talk is uh, so outdated now, 
the run sheet is about three months old. Now, this, so this story is not new, but you may not have heard about it. Jeep owner drops his uh, car off at the dealership, so there's the first problem. I was going to say there's the first option. So well, you bought a Jeep. So nobody cares. Yeah. Drops his car for an oil change, ends up fighting a $15 million lawsuit. <laughs> what? Ow. Well, it's not funny for him. Apparently, he drops his car off there for an oil change. One of the mechanics gets in the car, who apparently was not licensed to drive a manual or was not licensed at all, like he shouldn't have been driving it, doesn't know how to drive a manual, runs over the head mechanic, which I think the guy was in his 40s, hmm. kills the guy in the shop. Jesus Christ. So then the lawyers for the family of the guy that died, they're suing the owner of the Jeep because they can't sue the dealer because it's something to do with the employee can't sue... The same person. So the employee company. can't sue sue the employer. I don't I don't know why. So so even the lawyer said yeah he basically said yeah this is kind of insane. But our only route is to sue the owner. So in other words, you're going to sue someone who had nothing to do with it just to get money. So let me understand this. You're suing the owner of the car who's getting his oil changed who did nothing in this case. I have to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chewbacca. Yeah, I know. It, it sounds it sounds madness. This is just this it is just, like, it just sounds like America. Sums up the USA. They're so litigious. Oh, Jeep yeah. off to get an oil change. Next thing you know, he's he's being sued. Didn't know how to drive a manual death. and was unlicensed. But isn't some of that uh, on the uh, dealership for employing this guy? But more importantly, you have to ask yourself, what does this have to do with this case? Nothing. Anything a driver does with an owner's vehicle, even if the owner doesn't know the driver personally or didn't know that they'd be the one driving the vehicle is still the owner's responsibility. <laughs> it's outrageous, egregious, preposterous. <laughs> makes no sense at all. It does not make sense. I have to do that. But then at the same time, if this bloke had done an oil change at home, his warranty is probably void. So the car's owner is now suing the dealer. So like reverse suing for indemnity, which means the dealer would pay for any damages. But who's really winning out of this? The lawyers. The lawyers don't care, they get paid. Unreal. They're gonna to have to pull out the Chewbacca defense on this one. This is just... Does it make sense? Charles Leclerc, Charles Leclerc, I think it is. He's a current F1 driver. He was at Monaco doing a demo run in Nicky... say Monaco? Monaco. Nicky Lauda's 1974 car. The commentator, he's driving around the circuit. The commentators were actually saying the line, it's a childhood dream car. Look what happens. I mean, you talk about boyhood dream. I mean, to grow up in Monaco and dream of... Oh, no! Oh, no. I say that! I've done it! I've done it! I've... He's oh. gone off at Raskas, poor lad. What happened, Mr. Drifter? What happened? The car's damaged. Can you imagine what went down at the, uh, the old Marinello headquarters? You either deliver that prick to my door, we're done here. Marinello. Marinello. I went to Marinella actually. Well, we went to Marinella. We went to the museum there. Bloody, that was pretty surreal actually. Pretty cool. Cruising around that area. If you've never been there, it's incredible. The racetrack is in the middle of the city or the town. So essentially, the town was built around the racetrack. You'd never see anything like it. So you're just driving, essentially think about you going to Coles and you're backing your car to the car park and you hear a Formula One car we, go past. We were driving through yeah. and we heard something, pulled into this car park, Scaled a fence, but they're just driving some F1 cars around the small circuit there. We're yeah, just like, this is sick. I think the locals said you just get used to the noise. <laughs> the French are at it again. Super duper speed cameras incoming. Don't they just have the uh, best interests of their citizens at heart all the time? The Parafex Nano has been in development for some time and utilizes 3D LiDAR to scan up to 100 meters of road over 360 degrees. It's a learning computer. The system can also be used to detect vehicles jumping red lights, crossing double white lines, drivers not wearing seatbelts, tailgating, driving against the flow of traffic and failing to hold at a stop sign. Maybe they can uh, target some cyclists breaking the law. Oh, that's right. They're not registered. How could they book them? Do you notice when you get to be the, some comments there? You get to the lights and there's a cyclist. The other day I was doing it. I was with... Uh, Just illegal maneuvers everywhere. I was with the better half in the car and, and the cyclist comes up. You know how they're, they're rocking on the bike? Mm. And they just slowly start inching, and I said to my, um, said to the missus, "You watch this. He'll just he'll act like he's obeying that red light camera for other. Uh, sorry, the red, the red light at the traffic light. He, he'll he'll do the right thing for about 15 seconds, and then he'll get to the point where we'll just be like, oh well, I've, I've sat here long enough. I'll just go through the intersection. And what did he do? Like clockwork, straight through. Road rules don't apply, pal. 
And that, that camera you just pointed out that was just getting everything, can you imagine if they just employed that in Queensland or some of those um, motorways? It would just be like, if you had the ding, ding, the uh, whoever's got their phone hooked up to that um, camera, oh, yeah. it'd, just be like, it'd just be like, oh, it'd be machine gun, machine gun, 24 7. Endless money pit. It's all about your safety though. And Jordy, what am I talking about? I mean, these people, if they just did the right thing, just don't speed. Just don't speed, don't tailgate, don't do anything. Just do the right thing. Earlier, we got accused of misinformation. Well, I've, I've just got it right here. The last bench talk, you said, and I quote, I don't reckon Mitsubishi will be around. As a, as a car brand, I don't reckon they'll produce electric cars, period. And I'll still stand by that. Hey, I know you're not thinking. You never do. They just make air conditioners. That's the only electric well, device they make. Look what I found. In 2009, Mitsubishi sold this EV. This is like 2,000% level A-grade nugget. That looks like a, what they based the Mirage off. 13 years later, they just have a plug-in hybrid SUV. No EVs though. No. So, and they even came out during the week and said, in Australia, the future is, what do you call it? Plug-in hybrid electric, which isn't a really... It, it actually does make sense because uh, Australia, all the... We're like the last country is going to get EVs. Oh, we got the best of both worlds. Yeah. But I still, I'm still correct. They don't have any battery EVs. They don't have an actual EV on the horizon. I don't think they have one worldwide. No. Well, maybe they do overseas, but not here. No, I was looking. They just sell uh, some killer. Uh, there was talk about bringing that. The, it's always the Rally Art brand. You see the uh, the clickbait auto journalist Rally Art's coming back. It's like, and they're they're going to enter the fray with the new um, Triton, and you're just like. In the news recently, the ACT. That's a small chunk of Australia that no one really cares about. Yep. They pledge nine out of ten cars will be EVs by 2030. Apparently, they've made this. I uh, believe that. Yeah. In that uh, in that there. part of the yeah. country, yeah. Yeah, I'm serious. Brilliant move. And by 2040, they should refuse to register ICE vehicles. Ban secondhand sales of ICE vehicles. And require anyone running a fueling stop to have alternate energy options. By 2050, fossil fuel sales banned. But hey, it's 28 years away, stop getting so upset. So that was a comment. Referring to all the people skitzing it over the banner. So you can't even, so if you can't afford a new electric car, you can't even buy a secondhand petrol car? If you're poor, stop being poor. Well, this one. NASCAR is reportedly currently looking to set up its own electric racing series and a demonstration race will be held early next year. <laughs> Better get the uh, hearing protection out for that one. The electric NASCAR races will reportedly run on a 900 volt architecture and have an in excess of a thousand horsepower and they're all going to be all wheel drive. Are they going to have drivers? Pretty, pretty good fan feedback on it as expected. Batteries belong in flashlights. I thought they belong in something that starts with D. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I read. Oh, you know all about that, do you? Right. Nothing more exciting than watching a group of Milwaukee drills going around in circles. I guess it will be a three-part race so everyone can pit for an hour to recharge. NASCAR sucks already, let's make it worse. So we're gonna drive straight and then we're gonna be turning to the lamp. The BMW CEO was saying that going all in on EVs is not a good idea. I've noticed lately they've been all in. When you look at the technology coming out, the EV push, we must be careful because at the same time you increase dependency on very few countries. That's true. That is true, yes. If someone cannot buy an EV for some reason but needs a car, would you rather propose he continues to drive his old car forever if you are not selling combustion engines anymore, someone else will? Because they're trying to make the case to continue combustion engines with better quality fuels. Yes, but they also may not suit everyone's needs. Like, it's not a solution. Electric cars aren't a solution, they're an alternative. Alternative. But they're also not going to be... The uptake in third world countries especially is... It's just not going to happen for... ever. Yeah, I know. If you, I mean, I've done a fair bit of travelling in uh, lower socio-economic countries and, uh, yeah, I just don't think the, uh, the locals are going to be buying electric cars. Before anyone says maintenance costs, our plug-in crossover was tens of thousands cheaper than a Model Y, which is a Tesla, mm. and even the upgraded red paint was two grand cheaper alone. That pays for 10 years worth of yearly oil changes and a coolant flush that's scheduled for once every 10 years. I think he's got a point, right? If you were to buy something like a Corolla 
hybrid, they're not that expensive to buy compared to an electric car of a similar type, you know, style mm. car. And they don't use much petrol. And they're a Toyota. They don't really... If you've ever owned hey. a Toyota, there's not much in terms of maintenance costs, is there? But look, the Pro EV people, you can't, you can't be even half positive about a, um, a, mm. a hybrid because that's, that's still ice. Does it pay for the rusted out mufflers and rusted out exhaust pipes? My 12-year-old Prius went through two mufflers and an exhaust system over its lifetime. Where is this person driving? And a stolen catalytic converter. Oh yeah, because that's the car's fault, because oh, yeah, it got, got stolen, yeah. yeah. Where are they parking this thing? Just on a, on a salt bed? Why is everything rusty? I've never had an exhaust rusted out. Oh, and I believe in science. No, there's no room for ice passenger vehicles. I don't give a shit about the never EV people. They can grow up and realize they failed high school science and should stop telling people it was cold today, so global warming is a myth. You mean the same science that tells us that they're uh, a man is a woman? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs>